keep that idea of that moment of experience myself and transfer it into, into the film. So actually that shot that you are referring to is, um, is actually the entrance that anybody would take into his workspace, <laughs> storage. But it, it even has a little um, tunnel where you go through and then it opens. So the track was much longer, but they obviously, for the right reasons, they used only the end bit where you, where you see uh, like a play world and then suddenly you realize, oh, this is the scale. It's all really big. And then he really knows how to push his pictures around. You can tell that for sure. So it wasn't something that you as a camera person thought was daunting or overly challenging. It was no, completely inspiring. It's just as that, you know, I mean, of course it was a big task and kind of you know, a big responsibility to make a film about such an artist or and with such an artist. So it's, but actually I'm, I'm really happy and I couldn't have done it earlier, I think. So in my, in the state of my career or my development or capabilities or whatever, I think it was the right, the right time at the right place for me. That's interesting so that you say that. I was really happy that it happened now and it took him and uh, Anselm 30 years uh, to make this film because they started planning about it or speaking about it in 91. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I haven't met him yet by then, so <laughs> it wouldn't have happened with me. And there was no 3D technique like that as well. You have to, of course, talk about 3D, obviously. Um, you've worked with Vendus before. You've done, I think, mainly narrative works with him, possibly. I don't, honestly, don't know if this is your first documentary work you've done with him. But in terms of 3D, was this a decision that was clear from the very beginning? And is it something that um, was established, I guess, in the dialogue with Vendus, or was he very clear about this is the only way I can realize my vision of what I want to do with Anselm Kiefer? Well, I think there's two things to that. First, of course, it's the right format, I think, to grasp his um, magnitude of his work, and it's very immersive, which is important, and as well, um, Wim is very fond of that technique, and I think he's a real master, and um, you know, he really tries to push it to a, to a narrative level, not just entertaining level. And I think um, when you saw, if you saw Pina, which was uh, also like one of the best 3D movies I think I've ever seen, but um, of course it was obvious to do it in 3D. And for me, it, I had a little um, experience with them on 3D before. We did a nice a little short film about Edward Hopper, which was only shown in a museum in Basel, in Switzerland, in Basel. And um, so I knew a little bit about that technique, but um, it's still like uh, learning on the, on the way, you know, and it's the technique that we had on the beginning was very big and clumsy and like 35 kilos and we had not enough crew. And then we realized to get into that tunnel and do handheld work, we needed a smaller rig. So it took almost a year to build it and to develop it and make it work. So we could even go into a VW Beetle in the back with a slider, that was the first shot we did with this new rig and when everything was installed, there was no space for me, except if you know the Volkswagen Beetle, beside the back seat is a little compartment. So that was my space. But at least I, got, I was able to do really long handheld uh, moments with him at work and they even did this drone, which is I think the first 3D drone. So Wim is really into it and I think, um, I hope that this film lasts you know, not only as a relict, but as a maybe a new start, or it brings new ideas to other filmmakers to use this um, amazing medium in film. If we already have a question, you're very welcome to just raise your hand right up here in the front. I presume there's somebody with a microphone running. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to ask, uh, how involved was Anselm Kiefer in your work, um, in the visuals? He is not involved in that kind of stuff at all. Even with Wim, I think they had, it's what Wim, the, the story is that uh, Wim asked Anselm, what do you expect from, from me doing this film? I mean, they spoke for days or weeks before they started shooting, so they knew all the topics and then as you might have read, we shot over two 
two and a half years, so it was always like we knew more, we got to know each other better, and um, but basically, uh, Wim, um, an answer, an answer to him, um, I just want you to surprise me. And he never watched any edit, he never saw anything in between, no rushes, nothing. And then um, I think this year, or you know, this year in March or April, they did a screening in Berlin for him. And he, he didn't even knew that his son was acting as him. <laughs> I don't know, I don't that, anyway, it's a good story. And then, and then, and then um, he was like actually really, really surprised, and I think also moved. I unfortunately couldn't couldn't watch that screening. I mean, that must have been really special to see it with him first time. You know, he's a very, very amazing person. I just, but looking at it from the other side, did he have any reservations? or even restrictions, things where he said, I don't want you showing me doing certain things, or was he totally open to opening himself? No. It, took, it took a long time to make, him, uh, to make him give access to his workspace and see him at work, actually, he didn't like that. He thought, uh, very cheekily, he said, oh, this is just boring, watch a painter at work, who wants to know this, blah, blah, blah. But of course, I mean, Nobody has seen that in that way, I think, and the way he works was kind of, he kept it secretive, but in the end he, he agreed, and I, yeah, I think it's a very important part of the film to see him at work as well. I think there's very few things more interesting than watching workers work, whatever they do, I think it's a fantastic. Yeah, and that, that's just a couple of minutes in his life, but he basically lives in his studio, so he can go downstairs and there's always a canvas ready, even in, in the middle of the night, he can just go on his little scissor lift and drive around and paint in the middle of the night if he wants. It's all ready, always. So he's very productive, I think. When we were in lockdown, he did like 50 paintings in a month. But you saw the, the Venice uh, exhibition that was 110 meters by 11 meters. So to, to, just to, and, and you saw the little flag and what he was painting on was still in that painting. So luckily, we, I mean, you never know because he overpaints his paintings also a lot. So it's not only like one layer sometimes. And then sometimes he puts them in storage for 10 years in the heat so they look like they are aged. And then he finished them. Time is a very, very uh, important element in his, in his art. Anybody else have a question right over there, please? Uh, you did a movie about visual arts, and there were an amazing amount of very powerful visuals. And yet, what you created is a thing in its own. Did you have any guiding principles, practices, or what helped you not to drown in uh, Kiefer's visuals? Uh, I tell you something funny. I feel very connected to Anselm in a way. A, we are from the same area in the Black Forest, so he always was speaking to me in his dialects, and then was not understanding much. And, I always looked in the camera and asked, France, was it good? And he was like, no, don't look into the lens. And anyways, I feel like he is a child in his grown-up, very experienced, educated mind. And I'm the same, so I'm always referring to me as an innocent person watching. And I, I know from 30 years, the techniques I can handle them, so I just let it come, and I try to I try to stay intuitive as long as possible, so I don't have too many preconceptions, and I'm, I'm that way I'm also open to the very end for ideas. If something happens that you can plan or you can think or you can wish for, but that's not what counts. It's the moment, and then you have to be uh, reactive. So I would I would probably blame myself if I wouldn't be like that. So that's how I try to work. Right? on every project, but sometimes, of course, there's more pressure and more preparation here as well. I mean, if you work with somebody like him and you frame it not exactly the way he wants it, you know you have to do it again. So there's a lot of pressure, like it's friendly pressure, but still it is, you know, and he sees everything. So he, uh, his eyes, I mean, uh, yeah, masterful. <laughs>
anybody else? It's, I mean, it's, it's a cliche to say it, but it's, it's very layered. The film is very layered. There's a layer that you talk about watching and observing Hans and Kiefer at work. And then throughout the film, more and more layers come in, even in terms of screens, actual screens coming in, television screens, projections onto screens. And in the end, it, it becomes something magical and, and totally unique and, and, and by itself. And, but I found it interesting that there are moments where Kiefer is directed. There are a few, he's walking the tightrope, he's lying in bed with, with I think, the, the grandnephew of, of, of the vendors next to him. And how was that for him? Was that something he was comfortable with, or, or did it take a lot of, did it take two and a half years to convince him yeah, to do also, that? Yeah, also that was, a, that, that was a big development because we, we realized sometimes it's not good to see him in his art, it's kind of manierism, so it's not, it's not like natural, and um, I think he was like busy, and then when we got ready with the scene, somebody called his assistant, and then he came with his car and honked the horn and stepped out and said, what do I have to do? And then we had planned out a rough idea what he should do, so he did that, and sometimes he said, oh no, I would not do that, but I do that, and then we put with cigar and no cigar, but he's very, um, he's very jovial, he's very friendly, and he becomes very close to us over the time, so I think he trusted us more in the direction and then obviously the end bit with the monitors and the screen that was happening after two years of editing and version 110 of the edit where they then knew what to put in as archival footage and we had to shoot it the way it fits to the location. So it was like uh, we went there three times to Pajak in total so that was the last time and it happened I think in March before in May was the premiere so it was very tight. Maybe that's right here in Is it on? Yeah. I was just wondering if you talk now about something challenging to work with Wim's eyes and to work with Anselm as um, well his his ego or his personality. And um, was it also challenging to work with the three D technique, or was there anything else that challenged you as a camera person? Yeah, it's a, it's a different it's a different medium. You have to learn uh, how to see and what's good for distance and what's hurting the eye or the brain when you watch it now. But we had amazing stereographer, uh, Sebastian Kramer, who also developed the rigs, and he, you know, he controlled all that, and basically he pulls the stereo effect, and it's kind of embedded in the material, but in, in the grading you can change it a little bit and, and make it a little more pleasant. But basically he has to pull the stereoscopic effect uh, while we were shooting. So it's it's challenging and it's more time consuming. But we know that and then you can plan with that with that reality. So it's a little slower, but with this handheld rig and, and, and how we pushed it forward, you could even do steady cam, which is very unusual and um, yeah, it worked really well. And I'm, I'm really happy that I had this amazing uh, technical support because otherwise I would worry about it, so this was off my, you know, my mind. It was just technique. So I, I knew what I had to watch, but I also tried to free myself from it and just just ask, not, not think of it if something is impossible, but think, is it possible? 